Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And I've been working feverishly the last few days on my Drama Queen journal and I thought what she was missing was a corset pocket. So this is what I came up with and I had a lot of fun making it. And you can see that, um, here let me get this little, this little thing. The pocket is here, like so, and it's quite a deep pocket. It goes all the way to the bottom, and I can just attach it to a page. And I had so much fun making it that I thought it would be fun to make one on camera. So why don't we go ahead and get started. And the first thing you're going to need is an envelope. So I'm using this envelope, and I like the kind where they have the the the, uh, the flaps in kind of these triangles because it's just easier for me to see where to cut. But you don't really have to have that. You can draw on it where you want to cut. So I'm going to first of all glue the flap down. Let's grab some wax paper here. And I'm just using the Scotch Create glue stick just to glue the flap down. And next, I want to just cut off or cut the uh, cut the envelope to fit the page. And I already know that I want it to be seven inches tall, um, and but I want it to be even on both sides so that the center is still in the center. In other words, I don't want to just, since this envelope is uh, 10 and a quarter inches long, I don't want to just cut it down to seven on one end. I want to make sure that the point here is still in the middle. So what I'm going to do is figure out where the middle is. I'm going to put my ruler right there on the point and then line that up so that this is evenly spaced. And sometimes these, uh, these flaps are a little off center in the envelope, but I just wanna make sure it's in the center. Okay, so I've got it centered here, and now I'm gonna cut, well, I'm gonna make sure that there's three and a half inches on either side of the center line. So I'm gonna make a mark here, and this is one inch here three and a half. So those are the marks where I'm going to cut and then that will ensure that the point is still in the center. Okay, and then next, I'm going to just cut the tiniest little sliver off of one of the long ends, only because it's going to be easier to work with if I can open it out flat. So just enough to open it. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to cut along the flap lines so that I have two V-shaped openings. Okay, and then also I want to round off these corners. And you can use, um, you know, something like this to, to mark out your corner, or, you know, the rounded part, just trace along. But I'm just going to eyeball it. Now, okay, so this next part is optional. Um, I'm going to decoupage a napkin onto this part of the envelope. I'm not going to do anything with the back because that's just going to be glued to a page. You can if you want to, if you want to make it a floating pocket. But if you don't want to do that, you can just skip ahead to the next step where I start adding the lace and such. So, but I'm going to go ahead and... Um, decoupage this napkin on, and I'm going to use uh, Distress Collage Medium for this. 
So you can use Mod Podge if you want to. I just happen to really like uh, the Distress Collage Medium. This is the matte version. And I'm just going to do one side first. And I'm using this pretty napkin that I've already taken the... Um, backing off. Just press it on. I like to use my roller, my brayer, uh, to make sure that it has good uh, contact. Then I'll go ahead and I'll do the other side. And I'll just trim it uh, a little bit before I put the top coat on. I don't need all this other stuff in the way. I'm just trimming it loosely in here. I'll trim it uh, more thoroughly when I'm um, all done with the decoupage part. Okay, I'm going to do a top coat. And I'm just going to let that dry. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It's all dried and I've trimmed it. I'm going to just trim this little piece off right there. Trim it as close as I can. And now we want to define the shape. So corsets were designed to give um, a woman a very hourglassy figure. And fun fact, they actually rearranged organs inside the body because they were so tight. So I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to uh, lightly define the shape and hopefully I'll get it right. And if not, I can, I can just erase it. Um, You probably can't really see the pencil line on here, but when you do your own, you'll be able to. It probably just isn't picking it up very well in the, in the camera. Do that on both sides. Trying to get them somewhat even, if you can. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know if you can you can see that real well, but what I'm going to do next is I want to I'm going to end up accentuating this section and, and and sort of shading the outside section. So I'm just going to take some vintage photo and um, just kind of lightly shade in this section. And again, this this is optional, but I think this is uh, the shading part, whether you use a napkin or not, really helps to define uh, the corset itself against the background. And if you want to do it even more, you can just, you know, lay some, uh, I don't know, book page or something in this section. So you're starting to be able to see the shape of it more. And now to accentuate uh, this section even more, I'm going to highlight it with some Mod Podge gloss. And that will make it stand out even more, especially when it's all done. I'm almost out of Mod Podge gloss. <laughs> this is why you want to cut a sliver off of the one of the long ends <clears throat> because you want to be able to open it flat. Now 
Now, if you're not using a napkin, it, I mean, you can still do this if you're just using it on a, on a plain envelope, and it will still look really pretty. Sort of see the shape even better now. So I'm going to dry it and then decide if I want to uh, put on another coat. Okay, so this is dry and you can kind of see the, uh, the delineation here between the, the glossy Mod Podge and just the matte um, collage medium. So now what we want to do is put in the holes. And you want to find something with evenly spaced holes. So this is like the, the tear-off section of some old dot matrix cards that I found um, at a thrift store. But you can use like the, the, the backing of like hole reinforcers where you, you pull it off, pull off the hole reinforcer and it has that, you know, the holes in the backing. What you want to do is find something with evenly spaced holes. And what I'm doing is... I'm going to start kind of in the middle here, if you can see that, and I'm lining this up against the edge, and the first hole, I'm going to be kind of sort of at this point here, and then I'm just going to put a pencil mark, and I'm doing it on the inside of the envelope just because it's going to be easier for me to see the pencil marks. If you're not using a napkin, then it's just as easy to do it on the outside of the envelope. Actually, I don't really need this bottom one. And I'm just putting the, the hole over this uh, pencil mark just so I have it um, in the same spacing. And I'll add one more. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you can you can see the holes now. They're fairly even across from each other. And now I'm just going to take my 1 8 hole punch and I'm going to punch all the holes out. Okay, so now we have all of our holes, and those aren't exactly aligned, but that's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> Okay, so now I want to start decorating the front. And what I have here is some narrow lace. It's ruffly, and that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. And I'm going to just do the edges of where the corset is. So I'm going to use um, Fabri-Tac for that. And I'm going to go from the top. Follow my line. The curve. And then down to the bottom. And I want the lace to be facing away from the corset. So I'm just going to glue it on like so and curve it around. And then all the way down to the bottom, like so. And trim it. Do the same thing on the other side, just like that. And once it dries, I'll trim it a little bit uh, closer. 
But I also want to add some beads because I've got this beaded, this string of beads, um, like little pearls. And I'm going to glue that right on top of the lace just because it's cute. And of course, it should be nothing if not cute. They, uh, <laughs> we don't wear them anymore, thank goodness. Because <laughs> I guess they were kind of torture devices. But um, I don't know. You know what? I've never even owned a girdle. I remember the line in Pirates of the Caribbean when uh, Elizabeth was getting her corset tightened. And her maid was telling her all the fashionable women in, in Paris are wearing them. And she says they must, <clears throat> women in Paris must have learned not to breathe. <laughs> Which is probably pretty accurate. Okay, so far so good. And then just for fun, I'm going to put this rickrack on here as well. Rickrack is a little bit wider than the one I used on the other corset, but that's okay. I ran out of the narrower one. You can decorate them any way you like. At the end of this video, I'll show you another one that I made that's totally different, but I fell in love with it. I just had so much fun making these that I thought I would do something a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to let this glue dry completely before we get to the lacing up part. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so all the glue is dry now and I'm ready to start uh, lacing it up with this flat ribbon. Now the thing with flat ribbon, it's probably easier to use something like, I don't know, embroidery floss or yarn or something like that, but I really like the look of the ribbon. But the only issue that with the ribbon, since it's flat, is keeping it straightened out as you're going. So it takes a little bit of time. So what I did is I measured out eight times the length of my pocket and I'm folding it in half so I can find the middle. Um, and so that's going to be down at the bottom. And you lace it up basically like a pair of shoes. So to keep this so I know where to stop. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it clipped here at the bottom of the pocket. And I'm going to thread my needle, the ribbon. I have a big wide eye there. And I'm going to go uh, through the top of this bottom hole. And I'm always going to go in through the top. And because it laces on the outside, and that to me is cuter than where the laces cross if you're like underneath. Okay, so now I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to go there and move this out of the way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically skipping every other hole, going in through the top, and then this is where it gets, you know. Obviously, you have to keep straightening it out. But I like the way that the lace looks, so or the ribbon, rather than um, something narrower or rounder. If I had yarn, I might use yarn. But I like the look of the, the ribbon. Okay, then I'm going to skip this hole and go into the next one. And I'm just trying to keep my ribbon flat going through. There we go. And again, skipping this hole going in through here. So 
So because I have Mod Podge and Matte um, Collage Medium on here, it's not going to tear the holes. It's pretty strong. But if you're not using anything like that or if you're using a thinner envelope, you might want to consider reinforcing these holes from the bottom, you know, from the underside. Okay, so I'm going to skip this hole and go in here. <laughs> and that happens sometimes where it becomes unthreaded. That's okay. So I'm going to go th uh, through the top into this hole, but then obviously I'm going to have to go underneath into that, into the one there. So I'm not, I'm skipping this hole and going in there, but I'm going into, into it from underneath. And that's okay because it would be really hard to go in through the top on that one since it's, uh, since it's closed off. The envelope itself is closed off there. And that's the only place that you go in from the underneath if that makes sense. So now I'm back to doing it uh, through the top. And then it's every other hole until I'm done with this side and then I start on the other side. And do the same thing until I have, uh, have it threaded all the way up to the top. And because this is a really boring process, I'm going to uh, stop talking and I'm going to end up speeding it up on the camera when I go to edit the Okay, once you get to this point, you can uh, trim these tails off if you want to, but I think it's a good idea um, at this point also to, especially if you're using a slippery ribbon like this, to um, open it up and put a little bit of Fabri-Tac on the knot so that it stays where you want it, stays tied. Now, this is obviously cute enough, right? But we're not quite done. We want to put something behind here so that the, um, so that whatever you're putting in here doesn't get caught. But I like to put a little bit of lace behind it too. So it looks a little bit like a petticoat. So a uh, little petticoat on the top and a little petticoat on the bottom. And I just have um, some wide eyelet lace here that I found at the thrift store and I think that was Goodwill and I have it cut so that it has three scallops and the the white you know I want one in the middle obviously so um, I'm just going to add some Fabri-Tac let's see and I want to put the Fabri-Tac on the right side of the lace but first I want to trim off these little threads that are coming out the top from each one of them. I don't know why they're there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is there a right side and a wrong side? It kind of doesn't seem to matter. They would look about the same. Okay, so if there is a right side and a wrong side, you want to put your Fabri-Tac on the right side of your lace or eyelid or whatever you have. because that's the part that's going to show. Like that. Cute, right? Oh, 
I love this. Okay, and I want to put one on the bottom as well. And again, you know, you can make it any way you want, with or without this uh, piece. I just happen to think it makes it look extra special cute. But that's just me. Get more in the frame. So, oh, oh, I love that. Okay. Now I also have a piece of uh, neutral cardstock that I am going to glue just inside. And that way, um, if you, okay, so here's the thing. You can either glue this shut totally like that and then glue it on three sides to make it a pocket or you can put a piece of cardstock behind and glue it and then glue it here, which is what I'm going to do. And then I can glue the whole thing to a page. So what I want to do is add glue uh, and I'm going to use um, our glitter glue for this. I'm just going to do the long sides. I already have it cut to fit. I made it a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter than my envelope or my pocket or whatever you want to call it at this stage. And I'm just going to glue it in to the sides like that and press it down. And then that way you put your tag in behind there. So now I'm going to glue here and here and then attach it. And we're done. That's it. Now it's ready to go onto a page in a journal. And I, I hope you had fun uh, with this project. I hope you give it a um, give it a try on your own. And because these are super easy to make and lots of fun, and they look really cute in a journal. Now the other one that I made because I had so much fun doing this one, um, or one like this, is I made this one more of a steampunk so and I attached a zipper which does open but it's not exactly what I would call functional more of a steampunk vibe and I'm thinking of using it as a pocket but I also might turn it into a mini journal so um, if you want to see how I made one like this leave me a note in the comments and that could be the subject of my next video so isn't that cute so here we have two pockets made out of envelopes that can go in your junk journal um, and two totally different vibes and like I said if you want to see how this one's made leave me a note in the comments and I'll do it in my next video so I hope you had fun and I hope you'll give this a try so thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe if you haven't already and um, let the serendipity find you happy crafting everybody I'll see you in my next video bye bye